If you're a student, then maintaining a study record or a calendar can help you systematize your study and plan your strategy in a better way. You can look back at your study record and see what topics you've completed and when. So you don't have to consciously remember all of that and you have more mental energy to actually remember the stuff that matters. And based on the study record, you can also decide when to revise a certain topic that you've already read. And so this makes things stick better in your memory. And it makes studying much more efficient. It also serves as motivation since you can see right in front of you how much you've been studying daily. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Nikhil and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I use the Notion app to maintain a study calendar during my NEET PG preparation. There are also other ways in which I use Notion but I've already discussed that in my other video about 5 productive apps that I used. If you're not familiar with it, Notion is a fantastic database and note-taking app that can be used by virtually anyone from beginners to pros. It can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. With some modifications, it can be applicable not only to NEET PG aspirants but also to anyone who is studying and who wants to maintain a study calendar. I'll also try to put a link of the template that I used in this video in the description down below so do check it out. But before I go ahead, a quick disclaimer. If you're a NEET PG or a NEXT or an INICT aspirant and the exam is closed, then you might want to skip this video. This is not something that is necessary to do and it should not be a source of FOMO. You can also maintain a study record or calendar in a physical notebook. But then comes a question. If you can do that, then why use Notion at all for the study calendar? So using Notion, I was able to not only maintain a study calendar, but also systematize it and view it as per my liking. If you maintain a single study calendar, then you got all the info clumped in one calendar. But using Notion, I could view it category-wise or subject-wise. So for example, I want to see only the QBanks that I did in the calendar, or I only want to see what grand tests I did or what subject-wise tests I did. So I can do all of that in the Notion app by using various filters. I'll be explaining all of that in this video. The second and the more important thing was in the retrospective revision aspect. Now setting up the app takes some time, but once you're done with the setup, then adding an entry to it is as easy as adding a reminder to your phone. With that being said, now let's get straight to the process. Now the first thing that you'll have to do of course is to download the Notion app. You can also use the web version of Notion by going to I think notion.com or notion.so, it's something like that. Now for the sake of this video, I'm going to be showing the demonstration on their iPad, but the interface is the same on the phone with just a little bit of changes. If you have an iPad or a laptop, then I'd recommend that you use Notion on that. Because on the iPad or on the laptop, you can see the calendar entries at a glance on the calendar page itself. Whereas on the phone, it does not show the entries right in front in the calendar. It shows little small dot thingies over there. You have to first click on the date and then you'll be able to see all the entries. So it just adds one more step, which is fine, but it is better if you avoid that step in case you have an iPad or a laptop. So let's go ahead with the demonstration now. So firstly, when you download the Notion app, this is how the logo appears. You open it up. Now, the first time when you open your Notion app, you'll get to see a screen something like this. It will show you all the tips that you need to get started on mobile. Now, the interface is the same on mobile as well as on the iPad. Just that on the iPad, it's a little bigger and mobile, it will be a little smaller. So the basics are the same. You can type anywhere and start typing as you want to. Tablet plus above your keyboard to add content, headers, subpages, etc. So when you open up your keyboard, you'll see this bar and you'll see this plus option over here. So if you click the plus, then you'll get to see all these options. So text is a basic text block. A page will add a sub page. A to-do list will add checkboxes before all of the things. You can tap on it to mark the item as done. You'll get heading 1, 2 and 3, which will be a larger and bolder font size. You can also add tables, bulleted lists, number lists and the toggle list. The toggle list is one of the features that I especially like about Notion. I'll mention more about it in a while. And you can add a lot of different types of elements over here. So they have linked an example sub page here. There'll be this icon. It will let you know that this is a page. If you click on it, it will go to a different page. So here they will also explain that in Notion, you can nest pages, inside pages, inside pages infinitely. So you can systematize everything. If you don't want everything under one page, then you can have a page and sub pages to it. To go back, tap the link at top left or swipe from the left to right to access your screen. So you can hit this back button over here. It will get you back. Now you can highlight text and use the bar to format. So for example, if I highlight this text here, I can use this bar over here to format, so I can make it bold, italic, underline, whatever I want. I can make it strike through. Using this A icon, I can also change the font color or the background color, which is basically giving a highlight to it. As you can see, it has been highlighted orange here. And finally, you can open the sidebar by pressing the hamburger menu, those three lines on the top left. This will show you all of the pages that you have. So here they have also listed down some sample pages, like you can have a class notes type page where you can have your class notes systematized and organized according to different categories. And there are other sample pages over here too, which you can use, you can just explore all of this. Anyway, here we want to create a productivity calendar or a study calendar. So let's just add a page over here. There's this plus button, we'll add a page. Let's name it study calendar. Now you can tap here to continue with an empty page. So if I tap here, it will continue with an empty page. You can now type in and do whatever you want here. Or you can also add templates. So it has also got a various different templates like table, board, list, timeline, calendar, gallery, and all the other student and life templates. In our case, we want a calendar. So we'll hit the calendar button here. Now, when we hit this, it will ask you the data source. So this will be a feature which will be useful later. For now, let's ignore it. And we can hit the new database button, the plus button here. This will create a whole new calendar. Let me just hide this side menu. 
So this has created a new calendar over here in which you can now start adding entries. Now there are three levels in which you can organize your study calendar. I'll be explaining the level one first, which is the most basic level that is adding entries. So here we can see the calendar and today's date is 24 July. So say for example, I did the entomology Q bank from PSM today. So let's add that entry. When you tap here, you'll get to see the plus button. You can hit the plus button to add an entry. For example, I'll add here entomology Q bank and that's it. That entry is added. Now say, for example, I also did the health programs from PSM today. So I can hit the plus button, add PSM health programs. Suppose I've been studying PSM, but I also want to stay in touch with Dermat, uh, Psychiatry and Anesthesia. So I can hit the custom module. I can add the custom module number. So it is something like AQ1234 something. And then I can add the subjects here that will be Psych, Ortho, Anesthesia. And that's it, it's been added. Suppose I also gave a grant test yesterday on 23rd July. So I'll add a grant test here. Suppose it was GT3 in which I scored say 450 out of 800. I can write that here. I can also write how many I got correct, how many I got wrong, etc. So here now I have added a few more entries to the calendar to, in order to make it look a little popular here. Now at a glance you can see everything. But still it's a little difficult to figure out which of these are QBanks, which of these are topics that you've read or which of this is a first revision. So that's where the level 2 comes in. Now in level 2 you'll basically add different types of tags to all of these entries. So say for example let's go to this entomology QBank that I added the first. So entomology QBank. Now below this you can see that there are different types of properties that you can add. So there's this tags in which you can select what to add. So say for example we want to add a type over here. So I'll rename this property to type. Hit done button. Now I can click on this empty over here and I can add a new tag. So for example, this is a QBank. So I'll add a QBank over here. The tag is, does not exist. So it will go, give you an option to create that tag. So I can hit this create button. It will create that tag. Now uh, this is a tag which has been given the gray color. You can also change the colors. Now I used to solve my QBanks from Marrow. So I prefer it to have a blue color. So I'll give it a blue color and it's done. So it will have a blue color now. So as you can see now it has been tagged with QBank. Now when you go back to study calendar, you still don't see it right now. For that, you'll have to enable an option that will display the tags over here too. So uh, you can click this here and you can have this properties option. So properties may, you can see it's zero shown right now. So you can click here and you can click the I button in front of type. So here you can see there's an I icon. You can click that and now it will show that property in the calendar. So when you click done, you can see that it is showing QBank below entomology now. Let's have similar properties. For example, this is GT3. So I'll add the type as GT over here. Again, this property does not exist, so I'll hit the create button and I want it to be blue again because I used to give it on narrow. So I'll have it as blue, hit the done button and now it will be there. Now CVS Physio, this was the first time I read this topic. So this was my first read. So let's have first read and I can create that property and it will be orange. Let's just let it be orange right now. Now when I go to the renal tubules queue bank and when I go to the type, as you can see that the types we have created are all here now. So you can directly click on the queue bank. So all of that hard work in order to create the tags, you have to do only once. But when you once you've created the tags, then you can simply select it from the drop down menu. Let's do the same for all of the entries here. Now, one more thing that you can observe over here is that in this custom module, I've written the subject names in front, but you can also systematize that by adding a property of subjects. So I'll hit the add a new property button over here, this plus button. Now it will give you all the various types of properties that can be added over here. That is text, number, select, multi-select, status, etc. In case of subject, we'll hit the multi-select button. Now, why not single select? Because it will help you in custom modules to select multiple subjects. So I'll rename this property to subjects. Now you got the subjects tag over here as well. So now the subjects tag is empty. So for example, this custom module was psychiatry, ortho and anesthesia. So I'll go here and I will add psych in create button, ortho, anesthesia, and you can change the colors of all of these. I'll hit the done button. And now you can see that I don't have to keep writing this anymore in front of it. I can just delete all of this. Similarly, if you go back and go into another topic. So for example, I read the local anesthetics part from anesthesia. So here I can directly go to subject and select only anesthesia and the type will be first read and I can simply remove this so that when I go back to the main page, it will be much more cleaner. Now you can color code all of these subjects based on the years as I had done during my preparation. So all the first year subjects were green, the second years were orange, the third years were blue, the final year subjects, the major ones were red and the short subjects, SARPO, SARPO, that is skin, anesthesia, radio, psychiatry and ortho were this brownish color. So this way also you can keep all of your subjects systematized. Now I have added the tags to all of the entries and you can see that it is much more systematic and much more clean looking. You can see which of these are first reads, which of these are queue banks and which of these are any other category or that is revision one, revision two that you might want to add. Now we will make one more addition over here, which is going to help us in revisions further down the road. That is the difficulty level. So for example, let's go to personality disorders from psychiatry. Again, 
again the subject uh, has not been enabled over here so i'll go here to the properties and i'll also click the i button in front of subjects so i can also see the subjects over here in this calendar itself so let's go to personality disorders and say for example while reading personality disorders i found it very difficult to remember it i also did a q bank of personality disorders and i scored poorly on it so this was a poor topic for me so i can add a property of difficulty level over here so i'll hit to add the property and we can hit the single select button over here and this property can be named as difficulty i'll hit the done button i can go here into the difficulty level and add entries for the colors so i can go to the emoji section search the red color and let's go to this red circle i'll add this red circle here i can create it i'll go back and for example mania i found very easy so i can have it green let's search for green so for now let's add the green heart here suppose depression and bipolar i found moderately difficult that is not very easy and not very tough so i can have an orange or a yellow color so i'll go for orange and let's add the orange heart here and that's it now again you cannot see it in this calendar because i have not enabled it again go to this three dots menu go to the properties section and hit the i button in front of difficulty so you can see it here too. now during my preparation for grand tests i had added more properties here like the score property which was a text one in which i could add my score and how many i got correct wrong and how many i skipped and the performance level in this case it was orange and below there you can also add the text i added top 3 strongest top 3 weakest i also added the screenshot here of my grand test performance and i also used to add the wrong answers initially here but then later i started making my 20th notebook that is my own concise notes so that thing just went away from here So I'll explain how this red, orange, and green color coding is going to help you in a little while. But before that, let's jump over to level three of the study calendar. Now this thing definitely looks much better than it was before. But you can systematize this even more. You can view all the Q banks only in one place, all the subject reads only in one place, and the grand test in one place, separate from each other. Now one way to do this is to use filters button. So in this study calendar itself, you can see this filter button over here. So for example, you want to see only the Q banks that you did. So you can go to filter. You can filter it by type, and you can select only Q bank. and once you're done button as you can see in this table all the other entries have disappeared and you can only see your q bank entries here and you can do the same thing for the grand test as well as for the subject reads or the first revision or the first read but you will have to keep going to the filters section in order to add these filters you just have to go here and you have to delete this filter you can have you'll have to add another filter so there's a better way to do this by creating a dashboard for your study calendar we'll see how to do that now and that is level 3 Creating this dashboard will give you a view that looks something like this, where you have everything organized into toggles. You can click this and see only your Q banks. You can click this and see only your grand tests at a at a glance. And you can also organize it subject wise. So let's see how we can do all of this. So you were on this page earlier. Click on the top left on this uh, three lines hamburger menu, and we'll add one more page. This will be the study calendar dashboard. I'll hide this thing here. Now I can directly click calendar over here too but I want it organized into toggles so I want to completely make it my own so I'll simply tap here to continue with an empty page Now in notion to add on mobile you'll again click the plus button above the keyboard so it's not appearing here right now we'll click this left arrow button and that will give us the plus button somewhere Yes, scrolling to the left gives us this plus button. So we'll go down, and here's the toggle list option. But we also want the toggle in the form of a heading. So if you scroll a little down and go into the advanced blocks, you'll also see toggle headings here. So here I want, for example, toggle heading two. I'll type that thing, and you'll get this heading. So for example, I want all of my Q banks in one place. So I'll hit Q banks here and down. Now this toggle is closed. If you press press enter after this, then it will take you to the next line. But if you want to go inside that toggle. you'll have to press this small triangle button on the left of it now this will show you an empty toggle so you can click here or you can just press enter now and it will now go inside the toggle now we want to add a calendar again over here so again in order to add anything you'll click this plus button on top of the keyboard so i'll click the plus button and i'll find calendar so i'll click on this calendar view and this is where this data source option is going to come in handy so now i can select the data source to be that study calendar that i had created earlier I'll click on it and hit done button and now it is showing me all this data over here based on that study calendar. So my study calendar is here but it is showing me the data here because it is linked and this link is being shown by this uh, oblique arrow icon here. Now I want only the Q banks here so I'll do the same thing I'll go to filter here and press open this small menu here and I can filter it on the basis of type select Q bank hit done. Now this calendar is showing me only the Q banks and it is within this toggle so I can press this triangle again to hide it. Similarly I can create another toggle click plus button and toggle heading 2 and i'll create a toggle for first read i'll again go inside it click the plus button add the calendar view link it to the study calendar hit the done button and when you click on the filter this section will appear below the heading in type i'll go and select first read in this case i'll hit done and now in the calendar it is showing me only the first read items now if you do this for all of them then you can see that they have all been organized into toggles neatly you can go into the q banks and see only your q banks 
you can go into the first read and see only the first reads that you've done you can also do the similar thing for first revision second revision for subject wise tests for grand tests and that is exactly what i had done with my dashboard in it it was classified into qbanks gts topics tests and in the test you had all the subject wise tests we'll have to go back here into the dates i'll go to august and you can see all of my tests here the tnd discussion tests are different the pre pg has been tagged differently maro test has been tagged differently and so on Now you can also view the subject wise distribution using a similar concept you just create a subject wise title and then you create a toggle with the subject and then you'll go inside the toggle and link that table again and in the types in the filters you'll select the subject that you want there so for example i have ops gyni here so what i did here was i again created the calendar linked it to that database and within filters i selected the subject ops and gyni so now within this section i can see that only the obs and gyni items are now visible and i can see it in a glance now as you can see not just the read but all the things that are related to that subject will now appear here that is the first read the revision any custom modules that you did and any q banks that you did and that is why the multiple subject select in custom module that i had mentioned earlier comes useful here because this will help you to systematize it according to the subject wise list So this third level is the ultimate level that you can make for your study calendar which is completely systematized on the basis of types and subjects and this is a dashboard but if at any time you want to view all of the entries at once then you can again go to this menu and go to your main study calendar and in this you'll see all of your entries at once in one place now we have seen how to create the study calendar and the study dashboard on notion and of course i'll also try to provide a template for this for direct use but how is all of this useful the first thing is that it becomes extremely easy and efficient to maintain a study calendar so as i told you earlier the setting up of this calendar is what takes time but once you've done the setup then it becomes as easy as anything so for example here i studied local anesthesia on 12th july for example if i just also studied spinal anesthesia i'll just simply hit the plus button add spinal anesthesia difficulty level for example it was easy for me so i'll just hit green subject it was anesthesia and it was a first read for me and that's it that entry has been added in your calendar so it is extremely easy to add an entry here that's the first thing the second and the more important thing that i had mentioned earlier was in the retrospective revision aspect now how does this help in that way say for example today is 24 july and like today's day is done and tomorrow 25th comes up and now i want to start my revision suppose for example here with this psm health program i'm done with psm and the next day i'm starting my revision now i want to decide what to revise first so i can look at this calendar and i can look at what i had read first and what i read later according to this calendar i had read psychiatry first and then anesthesia logically i should read psychiatry first and then anesthesia now it is not always necessary that the topic that you read first will be the one that you will read the first again in revision it also depends on the difficulty level so for example here within psychiatry i had read mania and personality disorders now mania i have highlighted with green and personality disorders is red that means personality disorders was more difficult for me now here i have not added the tag of whether it's a previously asked question or not that's another tag that you can add you can go here add a property and whether it's a pyq or not you can hit the checkbox button so i'll just show it to you here you can go here add a property and you can add a checkbox category over here and i can rename this as pyq and that's it that property is now here and it's a check box property if personality disorders is a pyq i think i remember it has been asked a few times so i can hit this check box now i can have it show in the calendar as well i can go here i can go into properties and i can click the eye icon in front of pyq and now at a glance i can see if it was a pyq or not anyway previous questions are more important for neat preparation so i can see at a glance now uh, suppose even mania is a pyq so both of these are pyqs but which one of them do i want to read first as you can see mania was green for me his personality disorders was red so next time when i'm revising i can decide that i will do personality disorders first because that was weak for me so you might be able to realize now how this can help you to supercharge your preparation by doing your difficult topics first and leaving your easy ones for the rest by dividing it on the basis of subject type and pyqs and the third thing is that it just looks very aesthetic i mean just look at this calendar it looks so clean it is so easy to add entries and you can systematically view everything at a glance it's just a pleasure it makes studying a little less boring and it adds sort of a gamifying experience to the studying it doesn't matter if you're not a medical student even non medicos can use the same thing with a little bit of modification according to their course but also if you're a neat teacher or next or an nict aspirant don't get too much into the aesthetics of it also keep the strategies in mind that is the pyq focus completing your first reading and then managing your revisions and shortening the duration and making concise notes and all of that. that things i've mentioned all of that in my strategies video you can watch that thing later and i'll also try to link the template of this thing down in the description below so do check it out if you also want to see the other apps that i used for increasing my productivity i have made a separate video on the five productive apps that i used you can watch that so i hope that after watching this video you'll also start to use notion for your study calendar or your productivity calendar and systematize your whole process this kind of demonstration based video and in fact all the other videos takes a lot of time to make including scripting and video editing which takes hours and hours of editing in order to get to this level of video so if you like this video and found it useful please do consider liking sharing the video and subscribing to the channel it helps me a lot and it motivates me to make more better content like this for you guys so that's it for this particular video and i'll see you in the next one bye bye